Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the latest reading vlog. I forgot to film an update. It's now actually, it's now actually 20 to 1 on the morning of Wednesday. Uh, I don't know what the date is, the 20th, maybe? Um, but yes, I thought I'd do a quick intro now, and then we'll cut back and you can see some food, and then I'll bring you back to me again, and I'll talk to you about what I'm reading. Let's do this. Guy, then, it, like, who neither I have uh, vegan then, like, pancakes suddenly, with tomato like, and mushroom, hungry, and I'm watching Mara from Books Like Whoa. Hooray. Yum, yum. I made grilled red pepper and aubergine soup. Yum, yum. So, as for my reading, I read The Method uh, by Duncan Ralston. The subtitle here is Love is Pain. And Ralston I kind of know as a horror author. I've read some of his books before. I actually read this for Todd and Dane's indie read-along. And I wasn't sure what I was expecting really going into this, but it was kind of like almost a sort of a thriller. Uh, well, it was a thriller, I guess, like a psychological slash domestic thriller about this young couple who go to this lodge kind of in the woods uh, for something called The Method, which is like a kind of couples counselling, and then basically things go a bit crazy. And there are so many twists and turns, especially towards the end, that I don't see how anyone could really predict the way that the story actually progresses in. It's probably one of the best uh, thriller novels that I've read, and uh, for it to be an indie one as well, uh, published by Shadow Work Publishing, I was uh, very impressed. So I gave this a pretty solid 4 out of 5 and would recommend it, especially if you like thrillers or if you like indie novels. And then... I've moved on to Terry Pratchett, A Blink on the Screen, A Blink of the Screen, which is collected shorter fiction, and um, this a lot of this was first published in newspapers and stuff like that. There are some precursors, so there's a precursor to like The Long War, which he wrote with Stephen Baxter, uh, a precursor story to like The Gnomes. So it's basically recognisably, recognisably those stories, except like earlier versions of them, which is very cool. My hair's a bit fluffy because I had a shower as well. Um, I'm going to show you this book because it's pretty beautiful. And then it's got these photos in as well, look. Well, not photos, I said that earlier. They're not photos, they're illustrations. Yeah, really cool. And pretty good short stories as well. It's on par for a, a 4 out of 5 so far. So yeah. Alright, I'll go and read some more. And do some more work. And hopefully tomorrow I will get to visit Bex in the hospital as well. So, yeah. And I'm watching crappy music videos. Hey Google, play. Yeah. So this is just like store-bought hummus, but I've, I've made the seeded flatbread. I'm actually making three of them. So this is my breakfast. All right, I had my hair cut. What do you think? It's not quite as long at the back now. Uh, I also trimmed my beard a bit. I'm probably looking super tired because I haven't slept. And now I'm off to Oxford on a mini adventure. It's not the happiest of adventures because I'm off to see Bex in the hospital for the first time since she's been in there, which is good, but also bad. But um, yeah, obviously I'm not going to film while I'm there, but I am going to read along the way and I'm going to... Sorry, I'm fiddling with my top button here, trying to do it left-handed. Um, <laughs> I am going to listen to my audiobook of The God Delusion, which I was supposed to finish in November, so I'm doing well with that. Um, and I've got some other books to read with me as well. And if I finish The God Delusion, I might even start The Handmaid's Tale. All right. So here we have quinoa stuffed peppers with vegan mayo. Mushroom tom yum. And I'm watching Bull Buck Geek. I should probably do some actual filming later. It's um, like frozen berries and banana blended together. It looks well nice. I made vegetable samosa things. Hooray! It is Friday and I filmed fuck all this week. But I thought I'd show you Biggie because look at how we sit and look at that. Oh, big yawn. <laughs> You're like a blob of darkness. You look like a void. You look like a black hole, Biggie. Uh oh, he's sucking me in with his gravitational pull. My beloved monster and me We go everywhere together When a raincoat that asks for sleep Gets us through all kinds of weather She will always be the only thing Comes between me and the awful sting Comes from living in a world that's so 
She will disrobe you and If you lay her down for a kiss A little heart it could explode She will always be the only thing That comes between me and the awful sting that comes from living in a world that's so damn me la 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 the picture mounted on the wall in a very specific way okay hey google <laughs> pause i can't i'm watching retza pure they um sort of take the piss out of people playing games uh, I haven't, I've been really bad with my vlog, so I'm going to combine two into two weeks worth again. It's Sunday, I'm off to Oxford, um, Bex has been released from hospital now, so I'm going to go and see her today, and then she's going to go to Essex to be with her parents, but uh, I'm probably going to go stay tonight, I think her aunt's there as well, I'm going to make her some soup, I'm going to do some reading while I've gone, and uh, yeah, I have this stack of books over here to update you guys on as well, but it might have to wait till I get back. Soup. Nice day. Oh no, my headphones came out. It is Monday, um, what time is it? It's 25 past two in the afternoon at the moment. I've just got back from Oxford. I went to see uh, Bex yesterday. She's healing up after her operation at the hospital. So she's gone to stay with her parents in Essex. I have my driving theory test on Wednesday in Oxford because I was gonna stay at hers, but obviously no longer. Um, and in the meantime, I have a bunch of books to update you on. I'll probably do these in, in shifts, really. So let's go. This is in no particular order as well, but I read uh, Death Note, Volume 1 uh, of the Black Edition, by story by Sugumi Oba, art by Takeshi Obata. And it was excellent. This contains Volumes 1 and 2 of the actual Death Note uh, manga, obviously. So it was interesting to read from right to left, but I kind of pretty quickly got into it really enjoyed the story it's probably a four out of five the only thing that i would have to say against it isn't a fault of the book and it's just that i've seen plenty of adaptations of it now so i knew exactly how the story was going to go and i was kind of hoping it would go a bit differently but it did not but that's not a problem um and i'm thinking about getting the box set of all six of these i also have so i got this and number three from charity shops for a pound uh which my american friends is like what a dollar twenty or something so, I was pretty happy with those, but I need the rest of the series to finish them. Okay, then over here we have Good Housekeeping Step-by-Step -step Vegetarian Cookbook. So, you've seen me cooking some of the recipes in this in the vlog. And basically, I consider a cookbook to be complete once I've tried out all of the recipes that I want to try out in it. So, I actually go through when I get it and highlight which ones I want to try. And yeah, it was... Uh, it was I. Uh, I gave it a 2 out of 5 in the end. Obviously it's vegetarian as well and I'm vegan so I had to... Well I thought I was going to have to veganise a lot of the recipes but there just weren't that many in there that I even wanted to try so I didn't really, didn't really bother. So I would recommend against getting this one unless you get it really cheap. I mean I think I got it for like a, a 50p from a char uh, no from a car boot sale which um, is a bit like a yard sale except in the back of... like pe People drive their cars full of stuff to a field and then we all go in and buy stuff. 
Welcome to England. Uh, then we have Jaws by Peter Benchley. I read this as a bedtime book because it took me a while to get into it. I did eventually enjoy it. I give it maybe a 3.5 out of 5. People have said that it's quite different to the movie, but I can't really remember the movie. I have seen it once or twice. I'll probably watch it again as well. There were a few problems with this in terms of... There were some sections in it that were quite... Um, I guess like anti-women, you know, uh, but it was part of like the narrative rather than like rather like part of the narrative voice rather than the characters themselves saying it or acting in certain ways, which was a little unsettling, I guess. But I mean, it is, it is of its time, I guess. I think it was, it was it the 1960s? P first published 1974. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was all right. Hmm. Uh, 3.5 out of 5 on that. Then what we got over here, we have uh, Hippo Banquet by Mary Kingsley, number 32 of the Penguin Mini Black Classics. So this says, the fearless, pioneering Victorian female explorer describes dodging elephants and fighting off a leopard with a stool in Africa. So this is pretty much worth reading because of how badass Mary Kingsley was. There are some, again, just because of the time it was written, some, I guess, unpleasant ways that she describes some of the natives in some of the countries but overall I mean she's traveled with these people and lived with them so she's not like I don't think she was a racist I think just she just shared some of the views of the time you know and again because she was just a pioneering woman worth reading it's another like three 3.5 out of five for me it wasn't one of the best of the penguin mini modern set but it was pretty good then we have here Elizabeth Gaskell the old nurse's story number 39 a ghostly child roams the Northumberland moors where, while fairy tale characters gather at a strange party in these two Victorian gothic tales. I think I enjoyed the second one more where the uh, fairy tales were gathering at this party. This guy basically gets kind of lost in the woods and he finds a house, goes up to the house and there's a big party on but they're all fairy tale characters and I don't want to ruin the ending. Uh, it kind of came out of nowhere the ending in a way and, and it was almost like one of those and then he woke up. Well it was, that was it and then he woke up. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. But yeah, it worked all right. This is another like 3.5 out of 5. It took me a while to get into a writing style, but once I uh, did, I, I kind of enjoyed it, you know? Then we have Terry Pratchett, A Blink of the Screen, Collected Shorter Fiction. And this is fiction from kind of throughout Pratchett's career. And that's kind of why it's good. I gave it a 4 out of 5. It covers from his early days as like a young writer to not long before his death, you know? And um, there's also, there's lots of stuff in here that's like the genesis of later stuff. So there's stuff that ties into like the Long War books that he did with Stephen Baxter. There's, I think there was something about uh, Good Omens, I can't remember, but there was also stuff like uh, early uh, Carpet People stuff and uh, early Gnome stuff. And then there was, sorry, my hair's in my face and it's itching. Uh, just one hair. And then there was also some like Discworld tie-ins as well. So yeah, it was really good. I also read The Mist in the Mirror by Susan Hill. I started reading this on the train to Oxford yesterday and finished reading it on the train back. It's excellent, four out of five. If you like The Woman in Black, you'll like this because they have these similar vibes. They also kind of, they're both really about someone going and investigating the past, I guess, and kind of ghost stories to do with that. And I also have a little kind of fear of mirrors as well. So that was interesting. Look how much my curtain where the door is is glowing. The porch is through there. I'd open it up, but then it'd be too bright. So yeah, really enjoyed this. Read it in like 24 hours and uh, I don't know why I put it off for so long because I've had it for a while, but basically I heard from a couple of people who independently met Susan Hill and both of them said they didn't really like her very much and that she wasn't very nice. So I guess that's what's put me off, but you know, who cares because her writing is good, so. Uh, and now I am reading Manga Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, illustrated by Sonia Leong. And so this is literally Manga Shakespeare and uh, I've literally, I've only just started it, but it's uh, set in, in Tokyo with like two rival Yakuza families, which is which is quite some of them. And then I also read Thunderball by Ian Fleming. It was the last of the Bond novels, which I hadn't read and I did enjoy it. Again, there are a few problems in the way that Fleming writes about women, but you expect that with Bond almost, you know, <laughs> like he's a bit of a, as a character, he's known to be a bit of a, a bit of a Jack the Lad. So, um, but yeah, it was good. And the only thing I have left now, I do also have Thrilling Cities, but if I read that, I've then read all of Ian Fleming's stuff, including like there was another one called like The Diamond Smugglers that was non-Bond, non-fiction, which is quite good. So yeah, I just want to read that soon. I'll probably read it as a bedtime book though, and uh, I'll read that soon and then I can finish off and I'll have done with Ian Fleming. So yeah, uh, actually I was going to keep going for a second week into this vlog, but I think we're, we're doing all right here. We're kind of... 
probably doing all right for time now and now that I've just waffled on for nearly 10 minutes about the books I read so um, so yeah on that note I'm gonna love you and leave you so as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye